Teacher Net, and welcome back to our general math class. You've seen many graphs of exponential functions in previous video lessons. We've emphasized that the graph of an exponential function passes both the vertical and horizontal line tests, which denotes that it is a one-to-one -one function. And since it is so, then it has an inverse function. Remember what an inverse function is? The inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function. There are exponential equations which cannot be solved easily. Suppose we have 3 to the x equals 7. How can we express 7 in terms of 3? I bet that's not easy. But in the world of logarithms, that is possible. 7 equals 3 to the x is also x equals logarithm of 7 to the base 3. Again, that is read as x equals logarithm of 7 to the base 3. Observe how an exponential function is translated into a logarithmic function. Moreover, the base of a logarithm can't be negative. Considering a equals b to the c and its logarithmic e equivalent c equals logarithm of a to the base b, b cannot be negative in both equations. Also, from this equivalence, logarithm of a to the base b can be negative since it is equal to c, which can take a negative number in the exponential form. Practice rewriting an exponential f or function to logarithmic function and vice versa in the following examples. Okay, example 1. Complete the table. So, some of the given are exponential equations and we will transform them to the logarithmic form. Then, some of the given are logarithmic equations which we have to rewrite in uh, or as exponential equations. For number 1, we have 5 cubed equals 125. In logarithmic form, as we have learned, this is equivalent to the exponent in the equation, which is 3, equals the logarithm of the answer to 5 cubed, that's 125, logarithm of 125 to the base, what is the base in the equation? 5. So this is to the base 5. Again, we have 3 equals logarithm of 125 to the base 5. This can be the left-hand side of the equation, then this will be the right-hand side of the equation by reflexive property. Okay, next, we have 1 half equals 64 raised to negative 1 6th power. Again, uh, the logarithmic in logarithmic form, this is equal to the exponent, which is negative 1 over 6 equals the logarithm of the answer when you raise 64 to, to an exponent, logarithm of 1 half to the base. What is the base in the exponential equation? 64. So to the base, 64. Again, we have negative 1 sixth equals logarithm of 1 half to the base, 64. Or, again, this, this may be logarithm of 1 half to the base 64 equals negative 1 6. We may also observe from this equation uh, that we have proven that a logarithm can be a negative number, can be equal to a negative number. Next, r plus 4 squared, or the binomial r plus 4 raised to the second power equals s, an exponential equation. And as a logarithmic equation, this is equal to Let's write first the logarithm. So this is logarithm of what is the answer when you raise a number to a power to an exponent s. So logarithm of s to the base. What is the base? The base is a binomial. Okay, let us erase this for us to give space for r plus 4. Okay, let's use again the pen. Okay, again, this is logarithm of s right. Okay. Logarithm of s 
to the base r plus 4. equals the exponent 2. Okay, so logarithm of s to the base r plus 4 equals 2, the exponent, or 2 equals logarithm of s to the base r plus 4. Now, this time, from the logarithmic form to the exponential form, the given is 3 equals logarithm of 8 to the base 2. So, this is the base. So, that is the base 2. Where will we get the exponent of that base? The value of the logarithm, which is 3. So, 2 cubed equals 8. And that is true. 2 cubed is equal to 8. Next, 2 equals logarithm of 121 to the base 11. So, that is... The base, what is the base there in the logarithm form, logarithmic form? 11. So we have 11 to the, what will be the exponent of this base? The value of the logarithm, which is 2. So 11 squared equals 121. Or you may write it as 121 equals 11 squared. Example 2. Find the value of each logarithm. Number 1. Logarithm of 32 to the base 2. Okay, let us equate this first to x. Let the value of logarithm be equal to x or any variable will do. Now, uh, our strategy will be to transform it to its exponential form. In exponential form, this is 2 to the x because that is the base. The subscript of the logarithm, so okay. 2 to the x equals 32. How do we solve exponential equation? We express uh, both, both sides of the equation as terms with the same basis. How will we express 32 in terms of 2? We know that this is 2 to the 5th, so we may rewrite it as 2 to the x equals 2 to the 5th. And now that the bases are equal, that tells us that their exponents are also equal. So x is equal to 5. That is the value of x. Logarithm of 32 to the base 2 is equal to 5. Let us write that. Therefore, the logarithm of 32 to the base 2 is equal to 5. Okay, next, for number, for number 2, we have logarithm of 1 over 100. Take note that if you see no base, if there is no base, that means that the base is 10. So this can be logarithm of 1 over 100 to the base 10. And then equals, for example, this is equal to y. Let us erase that first. Let's make this clear. Again, let's write 10 here. Or even without writing, you should know that there is a 10 here. Whenever you see no base equals, for example, this is equal to y. Let's use the variable y. So in exponential form, to get the value of this logarithm, we have to solve for y. So in exponential form, this is equal to the base raised to the exponent equals 1 over 100. So that is 10 raised to y equals 1 over 100. Next. We have to express 1 over 100 in terms of 10. 1 over 100 can be written as 1 over 10 squared. Okay, let's write the left-hand side. So 10 to the y equals 1 over 10 squared. 
And 10 squared is also, or 1 over 10 squared is also 10 to the negative 2. So that is 10 to the y equals 10 to the negative 2. Okay, what will we equate next? Both bases are 10, they are equal, so the exponents are also equal. y is equal to negative 2. Therefore, the logarithm of 1 over 100 is equal to negative 2. Example 3. The 1990 Philippine earthquake released an estimated 10 to the 16.1 joules of energy. What is its magnitude on a Richter scale? Note that the magnitude r of an earthquake is defined by the equation r equals 2 thirds times the logarithm of e over 10 to the 4.40. E. For us to solve for the magnitude r, which is being asked in the problem, then we need to substitute the given value for e, which is expressed in joules of energy. So that is 10 to the 16.1. So, the equation will now become R equals 2 thirds times the logarithm of 10 to the 16.1 over 10 to the 4.40. This is constant in the problem. Next, we may multiply both sides by 3 over 2 to eliminate this factor or by MPE. So, 3 over 2 times r is equal to 3 over 2r or 3r over 2 equals, multiply also the right-hand side by 3 over 2. So, 2 thirds times 3 over 2 is equal to 1. So, what will be left is this because 1 times this whole logarithm is, is still this logarithm. So, logarithm of 10 to the 16.1 over 10 to the 4.40. And now that we only have one logarithm, then we may transform it already in the exponential form for us to solve for r. So again, in exponential form, that will be the base of the logarithm. Whenever we see no base, that means that the base is 10. That's the common logarithm. So 10 to this exponent. The exponent will be the value of the logarithm, which is 3r over 2. Okay, let us write that. 10 from the base of the logarithm to the exponent. 3r over 2 equals this whole number. So 10 to the 16.1 over 10 to the 4.40. Next, just like what we have learned in elementary algebra, when we are dividing terms with the same bases, we copy the common base and then we subtract their exponents, numerator minus denominator. So we have 10 to the 3r over 2, we copy the left-hand side, equals 16.1 uh, minus 4.40 is equal to 11.7. So that will be 10 to the 11. 7. Okay. Wait. This is 7. Okay, next. R, which is the variable, is in the numerator. So we have to express them as terms with the same basis. And as they are expressed as terms with the same basis, both bases are 10, then we may equate the exponents. We now have 3r over 2 equals 11.7. Then, we will use MPE, multiply both sides by 2. We have 3r equals 11.7 times 2 is equal to 23.4. So, 23.4. And then again, by using MPE, multiply both sides by 1 third or divide both sides by 3 we'll get 3 divided by 3 is 1 times r is r. 23.4 divided by 3 is 7.8. Therefore, the magnitude of the 1990 Philippine earthquake is approximately equal to 7.8. This is an approximate 
value. You have just learned the basics of all logarithms and their use in real life. Measuring the magnitude of an earthquake is just one of them. Logarithmic functions are useful and their applications extend to complex and very relevant topics. Until next time!